Oh, sorry. Man, man to, to Iskon people in general, when we are writing about some Iskon authority, we are writing, we are giving all the title, Shira Satsa Sats has said that and that about Sridhar Maharaj or Narayan Maharaj. It's not right. So, <coughs> You should put a right honorific title for the person you are, you are commenting upon. So the etiquette begins there. It's very important because there is a foundation for a good relation. You're showing by your behavior what you, it doesn't matter what, what, you, what you write in your article. If, if the address of article is not in a proper form, then you, you, you you are showing what you really mean. So, that's not details, but they are very, very important details because they are showing your, your way of, of thinking. So, and in my opinion, we are not going any further if, if, if we are not seeing this, this, those things. They are very important things. So you should address another as you should like to be addressed yourself. There everything begins. So I mentioned this because in Poland, so in my speeches I, I all the time uh, relating to the Polish situation because uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a kind of dearest thing for, for me right now. So we have some, some discussions uh, going on there. And I've seen that, 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 that poor people are not behaving properly to the, to the elderly respected Vaishnavas. So I propose that we, we change our attitude and if we are writing articles or corresponding with other Vaishnavas about, about some important people on this planet in our tradition that, that we are writing in the proper manner. It's it's a uh, my humble request to everyone. Thank you very much. This is a very interesting point. Internet correspondence. Huh? Uh, this when I uh, correspond, I do correspond quite a lot by email also to uh, devotees from other Vaishnava organizations. So it starts with how do you address them? If I <coughs> address an Iskon devotee, I write <coughs> Dear so and so, -so Prabhu or Dear so and so Mataji, please accept my humble obeisances, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Okay. So now when I address somebody from the Gaudiya Mat, what do I say? When, when <coughs> I don't know, I, I'm not sure. When I get mails from devotees from Gaudiya Mat, it's, it's like a Dear Vaidyana Prabhu, Prabhu, Dandavat Pranams. Okay. So now, whenever I, I, I <laughs> write to somebody from another institution, I find this corner, I write Dandavat Pranams. But I'm not sure when, if he's satisfied. I had a correspondence recently with somebody, uh, you know, initiated by a devotee, um, Who's, I don't even know whether it's Gaudiya Mat. And he writes me, Hello, Vaidyana Das. <laughs> <laughs> and he is initiated, he has the certain name. What do I write him? Dear uh, Krishna Das Prabhu, or Dear Krishna Prabhu, uh, please accept my humble business. Because uh, this is just formality. Another thing is, uh, there are different standards of initiation, unlike Narayan Maharaj. My own son, my other son, was recently initiated by Srila Narayan Maharaj, I hope this is the right name, in Venice. And he, after his initiation, he started chanting regularly. Before his initiation, he wasn't chanting. So now, how am I going to address my son? Dear Madhusudan Prabhu, please accept my envelope. <laughs> Oh, uh, you know, this is uh, something that has to be resolved. <laughs> Excuse me.
excuse me for taking up the word, this is something which I have also had to deal with uh, for many years, especially in regards to the usage of the word Prabhupada and the further on etiquettes. But I think what Uttama Bhakti Prabhu just referred to is not those formalities. Actually, he's referring to when we write about somebody who is important and we are having any type of communication on a public platform where others also get to read. So I think the, the, the basic things, like in Goryamat, you say the following. If you want to talk to somebody, first find out who is his guru. Then, after you know who is his guru, you address him with some generosity and with some good, good words about his guru. Like, for example, you, when you say about, you speak to him about his guru, you say, you're a guru there. And you don't say, Sridhar uh, said, I heard or something. The, the, these, these are the things that are suddenly derogative, the derogative. And that's what's not appreciated. And if uh, this is the kind of things, I feel that's what Mutama yes. was trying to put out. So that when we talk about others who are obviously highly respectful to others, who we are addressing or who may read what we are read, writing right now, we should be considerate. Because to create faith in others is very difficult. To destroy faith is not so difficult. A few remarks is enough and the person starts doubting because our mind is already doubting from the very beginning. If you say something derogative about his faith, that makes it means eventually you lose your own face. It will hit back on you if you diminish another person's face. So just in that sense, in a particular uh, thing in the uh, usage of, like for example, Swami Maharaj, that's the way, that's how our Srila Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada is addressed by his God brothers and they're not offensive by saying and calling him Swami Maharaj. That is, that is their priority, they can do so. Mm. So in this way, if uh, sometimes, in, especially talking about Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Prabhupada or Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada, it's good for a disciple of Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada. When talking to a disciple of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Prabhupada, to also mention his name Prabhupada. But there is no more of them around, but their disciples are still alive. So when we are referring to Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Prabhupada, it's very helpful for the communication to also say Prabhupada, even though this is not the necessity. And there's a funny thing about it. The longer a person has disappeared, the lesser formalities is there. Nobody's ever said, well, he's so far removed, you say Rupa Goswami and everybody goes like this, you know. The, no, the, 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 the formality becomes dropped as far. You don't say, like some people say, in the Krishna Maharaj, and we say, Who, what's that? Who is this? Uh, but it's, it's from the heart means if there's some respect for the feelings of the others, then it's good. If that's, there's no regard for the feelings of the others, it's not good. Otherwise, the formalities are not, like you say, in the letters. Like that. Uh, I wanted to ask uh, Swami Maharaj, uh, our Swami Maharaj here, who has been traveling around the world, meeting devotees, and he, he's also uh, coming from Berlin, where we reached recently, well, a few years ago, we registered a society, which is actually, you know, I'm a disciple of Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, but we called our society, Society Hindu Gemeinschaft. And we were thinking about it a long time, why we should call it Hindu Association. Because uh, we were also looking upon this exchange and the, the, the feel and the communication and the image which is created. Yes, and when Dr. Sital said about the Hindu Vaishnava, it's like uh, it's like the elephant, you know. It depends which side you're looking of it and what you're describing. But with one word elephant